All right, guys, or Val here. He's visiting us all the way up from Atlanta, getting, a, getting his first ATG workout in at the ATG Buddies Gym. We got Jump Balance, Connor, Coach Connor in the house. So we're taking him through a little bit of the lower body for knees today. Tomorrow we're gonna do posterior chain, then we're gonna finish out with full upper body workout. So first thing we do here is sled, right? We're going backwards. This version is gonna be five minutes. First two minutes, just getting knees over the toes. Second two minutes, going a little bit faster. Then that last minute, we're gonna go as hard as possible. All right. The goal here is to get as much blood flow into the patellar tendon as possible so we can start getting to some deeper and deeper knee bend. Also training through the feet. All right, so is this, so how long have you been training ATG, man? This has been four months now. About four months? About four months. Yeah, you can hold it. It's been about four months now. When I first started, I was 250 pounds. Yeah. I would say this sled, and my nutrition was the main thing that got me down to now. I think I'm like 190 or 185. Yeah. That's yeah. Wow. Sweet. Last 20 seconds. Let's go. Fast as you can. You see that? Let's go. Go, 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 go. Push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Last minute. The whole time working. Let's go. Back around. Go, 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 go. There we go. All you got. All out. All out. Sled. All out. Yep. Yep. Good. Turn around. You got. You got at least two more. Let's go. Come on. Go. 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 Sprint. Backward sprint. Let's go. Good. All out. Other one. Other way. One more trip. Let's go, Orval. Go. It's all about that warm up. So this is a seated tip bar machine. Uh, this is actually a collab between Eight Athletic Truth Coop and Sorenex here. So Ben actually made it. Connor's probably had the strong, t strongest tips in like the world. I would say uh, pretty good because in jumping, <laughs> it's really necessary to be able to decelerate right before a jump. Okay. So a lot of people are strong with explosive, like, like half raises, the flexion part of it, where it's the... You can isolate legs, train them both at the same time, but you're also going to be able to address the weaker leg because it's isolated. You're lifting weight on both feet separately. Okay. What I usually like to do for this is high reps because it's one of those exercises that's working through like a shorter range of motion. So you kind of really need to build up that pain-free blood flow and circulation in the shins and in the ankles. So I don't know what it says in the standards app, but like 15 uh, to 20 reps. 20 percent for 20 reps. 20 percent for 20 reps. But we're not going to push it on this one. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just a warm up too. Yeah. Just starting out. Okay. Yeah. So you want to sit? The machine's a little different, right? Okay. So go ahead. Is it yeah. this, like this? Or yeah. 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 <coughs> like Excuse this. Me. Yep. Oh. Exactly. Hold at the top for like one, two seconds. You almost want to move back, scoot back a little bit. That will allow for more plantar flexion, yeah. like more stretch right at the here. bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that lets you stretch it fully, like Connor said. Ooh, yeah, so a big stretch in there. Do you feel pain when you do these? A little bit of pain. Okay, so maybe you go the yeah, lower the way. You can even just do the just do the bar, just to get blood flow in there. We don't want to aggravate it anymore. So a little bit, Riley? Really? I definitely Yeah. Ankle flossing might be a good start. What, yeah. You want to get it out? Yeah. So you, there's some right here. Yeah. So two by two, uh, what would you say is like one to five of the pain scale right now? Five. A five? Oh, it's that bad? Oh, damn, okay. Yeah, we. Yeah, let's start with ankle flossing instead. Yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> flossing the ankles, it's good that you're kind of already set up there. But oh, one to five? Oh, I thought you said uh, one to five is, is about four. Right. About a four? Yeah. yeah that's pretty that's high still. Are, are you familiar with ankle flossing? No, you, I haven't done that before. So, ankle flossing, you're going to, similar to knee flossing, you're going to wrap it around okay. your ankle. Start like at the kind of base of the ankle. Wrap it around. And 
build up. So it's the shin where you feel the pain, right? Yes. So yeah, so we're gonna just slightly go up the ankle, up and down. Oh, you release it, all the blood is going down. Yeah, restricting See, blood flow, and that's then... That's what I need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty cheap too, like that's $10 gonna dollar floss bands. That's, gonna, that's how it's gonna heal. <clears throat> yep. Similar process to what we do for the knee. Okay. Like if you're in the knee floss, you're gonna restrict blood flow right in the area that is yep. banded up. Yeah. And then I'll kind of demo for you how I would do this. Yeah, I gotta do it. Like that. Yeah. I wanna, like... Ruben, we might want to pivot to a bench over here yeah. for the ankle flossing. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In the blood there, mm -hmm. and then when you take it off, everything just rushes. Exactly. Down. And that's the science behind the healing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. You can look up BFR, it's pretty much the same concept. Blood flow restriction training. Okay. Um, but yeah, in ATG, I guess the principle of it is building from the ground up, right? So you look at bodybuilders, a lot of them, they're like huge up here, they're built like an anvil. Because they're huge up here and the tiny little legs, so it's like right. going this way. Right. If you want to be athletic, you want to do the exact opposite of that. You want to have most of your strength in the bottom of your feet, because this is the one that touches the most with the ground, right? Most contact. And if you want to stay, if you want to build longevity through athleticism, then you especially want to build lower leg strength because that's the shock absorber whenever you land mm -hmm. and you more jump. So tib raises are so important because of that. And then uh, calf raises are going to be really important because of that. So let's get you doing these tib raises first and then we'll go through the calves. Connor's one of the strongest people I know in tib raises because he's also one of the, and, and that's all correlates to him being one of the highest jumpers I know too because he's just so good at, Absorbing the shock of the the ground hitting you know his his body again that he's able to jump more often because it doesn't do as much damage to the tendons. And what I'd like to add as well to that is it doesn't take a lot of effort just to start. When I was doing ATG from the beginning, when we didn't have loaded options like a tid bar, I was just doing the wall version. And even when I started, I had to scale it back quite a bit just because mainly I didn't have the ankle mobility. So working the ankle mobility and the strength as a whole is going to help you improve that tib strength and avoid issues and injuries. Yeah. But even just this alone, if this feels better, it's a great way to start improving your ankle and shin strength, strengthening the front and back. And even when I was just doing that demo with the floss bands myself, there's a ton of blood flow just going into my lower leg right here yeah. when you take it off. And it feels like almost like rejuvenating for the leg. All right, sweet. So, you good? <laughs> Is it pain? <laughs> You're looking at me like, what the hell? All right, so, I would say we're getting some calf raises too up for that. Should we try the wall Single version leg. of the tip raise first? Yeah, it's a good idea. Well, I mean, it's probably gonna be painful. Yeah, I actually tried that before I got here. Yeah, it was pain? Yeah. yeah. What I think is, a tip bar might be easier because although... Yeah, the tip bar, because it was stretching it, I feel like it was easier. What I'll say about the tip bar versus a seated tip machine too, is although the tip bar doesn't isolate legs, that also might help because you might not have to put as much stress on the what, like injured leg. So yeah. even though you might not be working it as much, it's still good for strengthening. Yeah. Are we using this one right now? Yeah, let's use a five. Yeah. I mean, even just that by yeah. itself might be a good start. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, at least to see how it feels. Yeah. I actually feel like the seated one was working pretty good. Working well? Oh, when I was, when I was doing that? Yeah. You can put your other foot up. We can do a solo too. We can take the floss bands off, too. You don't oh, want the restriction for too long. Okay. Let's see that. That's crazy. When you did backwards sled, did that hurt at all? Uh, I felt it. Like just That's why I was. Um. Uh, or like you're working the area. It was. It wasn't that bad. I was actually surprised because I thought. I was like, oh shit, I ain't gonna be able to do it. But it didn't, this hurts. Yeah. This hurts. Really that right. didn't really like hurt, but I felt it. Yeah, all right, let's finish up there. And then okay. we can try our calf raises. Okay. Take this off. Okay. Uh, the uh, blood 
Scale back version, even of like that, yeah. version, do you think? Would just be like holding on to something, standing like legs straight. Yeah. And then just raising your toes. Yeah. Like without having <clears throat> so much plantar flexion like that, you could just be standing up raising your toes. Your body over here is probably good, right? Yeah. All right, let's go through some ankle extension. Uh, calf raises, yeah, okay. ankle extension. Yeah, was, yeah, where that one came from. So the calf raises, like, this is, this is basically working your FA shell and your gastroc, right? These are the muscles that extend. You would point your toe fully, so you can get a heel up as high as possible. And I mean, if you're looking at somebody jumping, like, this is the last step right before they go. This, here is Tibbs, and then going right into calf, right? So uh, ankle flexion on the tib, like, your ability to, to absorb that and then redirect that movement at the ankle. So you're absorbing it with the tip, redirecting it with the ankle, and of course the quad is going all the way up through your body, right? Connor could probably show it a little bit better. Like ankle extension? Yeah. Extension. yeah, so like as you're jumping. Yeah, like extend like that, yeah. and then right before you jump, when you, once you plant this foot, the second, like, like that, that can start to extend. Right so all of that slower body. So getting really strong here is going to be great for getting more explosive when you're jumping. So. And if you didn't notice as well, this is kind of what we're going to dive into next. But when I was right here, my, you see like my knee slightly over the toe? Yeah. Like that top range knee strength? That's what the Paul Quinn stuff looks like you asked come in like so prominently. Yeah. Because we're, we have to be strong in this top range of motion to be able to jump. And that's also why the cab raises, I'd say, are equally as important as mm -hmm. the tip raises because you need that strength foundation. If your ankles can't handle it, your knees aren't going to be able to handle it either. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Straight up, single leg. You can just do double leg if you want. Okay. 25 reps, so getting as high as possible. There you go. Oh, perfect. I have a slam board at the house. Two. There you go. So you've been doing these? Yeah, I do these. Okay. Okay, do you want single leg for 25 reps? Which leg you want to try? With the bad one first. Okay, let's see. Always want, always start with your right first. There you go. Yeah, so you always start with your right, your the weaker leg first because you want to one, whatever gets worked first is going to get stronger. Uh, and then two, you always want to match whatever you're able to do on your weak leg because you don't want to create more imbalances. And also three, if you really have a nasty imbalance, you can then uh, do another extra set on that first leg, on the leg you first started with. And then over time, the imbalance will catch up just from you doing an extra set right after all the other ones. How many was that? That was 10. You want 25? Yeah. You got to be able to do 25. You okay? Okay. Okay, just let me know if you feel pain in your tibia, because otherwise... If somebody's injured, I'm always like wondering, like, are you are you okay or are you just fucking whining? <laughs> it's hard to tell. And a great way to scale it, which I'm noticing, I don't know if your ankle keeps slipping, but the less yeah. of a slant you have on your ankle, the easier it'll become too. Yeah. Which is a great way to scale it back. There you go. Yeah, so we can't do twenty five on the uh, on both. And I would do yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Other leg. So we're trying to go there. And then through and after that, let's go over to the calf raise. Because yeah. most students might not have a seated calf raise machine. Yeah. And then there's that option as well where you put like a slant board, like right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
as well. And like a semi-benefit to the KOT yeah. cap raise Sweet. is it also trampling many over the toe if you do this standing KOT yeah. cap raise version. Yeah, it's like isometric hold. We'll start with standing okay. KOT cap raise. So you don't need the slam ball for this. It's only going to make it harder. But all you do, put your knee over your toe, and you're going to keep the knee bent the entire time. As you okay. come up, raise the heels. Only the heels are moving. Okay. See like that? So we'll start with two legs. Eventually, you want to work up to one, and then you want to add weight. And then a way to progress that as well is how much knee over toe you have. The goal, I think the end goal in terms of that, is once the heel starts to lift up, that's your full range yeah. for working the KOT cap raise. That's right. And then one more thing I would have more about focus on is pushing the hips forward so the knees, hips, and shoulders stay in line. Or yeah. Just to keep the uh, form a little more strict. That looks good. Six. Bend your knees a little bit less, and then oh. try to straighten out your back. So like push the hips forward a bit? Yeah. There, there you go. go. Okay. Much better. Good. Fifteen. Yeah. So this is the way of doing it. If you don't have a seated calf raise machine at your gym, preferably you won't. You can do it on those. Do you have a seated calf raise machine at your gym? Let's Dude, go over the, it's wild how most gyms don't. Yeah, we'll do that too. But yeah, I agree. It's like most gyms don't have a seated tip raise, which yeah. I mean that's understandable. But I would expect some gyms to have a seated calf raise machine. Yeah. It's really not understandable, Connor. Wild. All right. You get some really good footage, by the way. Yeah. So you can go here for like if you don't, if you want to just replicate this at home, okay. you can go here. So to replicate a seated calf raise machine at home, you can just set up a slant board, bring your knee over your toe, put the weight on top, and then you just do raises from there. Okay. The closer right. you have the slant board to the bench or to your feet, too, the more of a uh, knee bend. Like a stretch you're going to get. Yeah, more of a knee bend. Okay. More stretch going from here. So all the way up, back down. You can add a lot of weight. You can even do single leg on this. So just okay. up. And then if you have dumbbells, down. I, I personally like using dumbbells mm -hmm. for that option. Yeah. You can show it with dumbbells there. The reason I like dumbbells is because, like, that's just a good way to single leg train. Bring your knees forward more. So scoot forward. Yeah, and then you can bring your feet back. No, 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 scoot forward and bring your feet back. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. There you go. So now you can put it on top. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not a lot of weight. It's pretty. And you should feel pretty flat. conservative. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty. I mean, that's a at home, you know, make your own seated calf race machine right there. <laughs> and you can, I mean, you, you don't, might not have a lot of weights, but you could even have a partner sit on your Yeah, what's nice knees. about these two is you can do a lot of reps. Like, you can go a long way with just doing like 50 reps. You don't need a lot of weight. Yeah. To feel the benefits. But, yeah. But yeah, it's, like Ruben said, there's a lot of ways to adjust. All right, that's good. We'll, okay. We're just showing you this one. Let's cool. go back to tip raises. Okay. So you can just do them right there with body weight since you're hurt. 25, I don't think, I don't think it's gonna hurt. Scoot back, yeah. So like at the very, scoot forward a little bit. Right. Yeah, at the very least you can do those okay. without too much pain. So come up, flex, yep, back down. Does that hurt rather? Still oh. a little bit? A little bit, no, yeah. this is fine. Yeah. As long as the... Improvement's always a good sign. If it's feeling better, that's good. So I would say, like, if you have a pain, like, this is what I was telling you to do at home. You probably didn't listen to me. But, <laughs> but it's like, hey, you can do these body weight. You can do both legs. Yeah, because just to get blood flow there. But you can do this just with just body weight, just to get blood flow there to help you heal. Because, I mean, that's basically what rehab is. Like, you're doing a lot of these exercises without <laughs> any weight. Right, or with bands. Um, in this case, even starting with just body weight is more beneficial than adding bands because then you start having pain, your body's gonna shy away from the movement. It's not gonna adapt. Um, like when you're jumping and you start having pain, your body doesn't wanna jump any higher, right? So when, you, when you're jumping and you're healthy, your body can absorb the forces that, are, that it's handling, then your body adapts more and you're able to jump higher and higher. 
So that's why it's important to get stronger tibs, but if you can't put any weight on them, it's best to just regress to wherever you can do without pain. And if right now it's body weight, then that, that's good for now. Eventually you're gonna have healthy shins again and you can start adding in the tib bar, right? Cause you're gonna be, do you have one at home, you can start doing that again. Are you, why, what keeps you from doing the tib bar? Is it like, you don't have don't any think, weights? I didn't know how to, I don't think I had it proper. I think my, they were just weak. Yeah. So I, I, I had the tip bar, I put the weight on it, and I couldn't even do it. I oh. should have just started with the, um, the wall. The wall. Yeah. So I think that's what it was. Even, like, the tip bar as well, you can do it without weight as well. Okay. That's a, a good option, too. And I, don't, I didn't have nowhere to, I didn't have what it is to sit. So oh, you didn't have a bench? Yeah. Okay. I don't have a bench out. Yeah. You, you don't. Have, like, a couch maybe with an end that... No, it'd be kind of hard to find. Yeah, that was another reason. I couldn't probably yeah. set it up to, to feel the... Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you can You can sit on the floor. The Nordic Mini was just too, Let me show too you. small. It was yeah. too small. I tried that too. You can sit on the floor and find like a cushion or something that will raise up your feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got a foam roller, so I can probably do that. Yeah, so you take a foam roller. You can do it like this. And then you can put the, t yeah, exactly. So oh, you can put the tip bar on. Yeah, That's so smart. I've I've actually had people do this before because there wasn't a bench available, like just in a group class um, when I was training at a yoga studio and it worked pretty well. So, because then you get even, you get plenty of stretch right there. Yeah. It's a little awkward for your legs, but as long as you're not putting too much, as long as you're not putting too much weight on there, you're pretty safe. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which nobody's doing like 45 pounds. All right, you got 25 there. Let's go back to single leg, straight leg. You can do it on both legs this time. Calf raise? Yeah, okay. single, straight leg calf. This is, la this is the last set. We're just doing two sets, 25 oh, each. And then we go polyquins. Yeah. What are you uh, Probably the mobility box. Mobility box, right? Oh, yeah. It's like the easiest thing you can use. But you can also set up some... Uh, Plates just to show them yeah. that you can do it on that too. <laughs> yeah, so as high as you can. Yeah, dude, I mean, you're getting plenty of, like, extension. I was going to say, that's impressive. The yeah. The extension he's going to get, or he's getting, is really good. So I don't think your calves are your problem. You just got to train your tibs. Like, it's, like, so important. Like, I just made a video about it. I was just posting that today. <laughs> But like how important it is to train your tips, because okay. Yeah, but it's literally so important because you gotta like huh? Oh okay, cool. I was gonna hand it to you. Um because you literally like they test this in older people to see who's gonna die first. So oh, like <laughs> yeah, because like whoever's tips are stronger is less likely to like fall over. And fall race is Another one of the highest why things. The are so good. Let's go. Uh, okay. th this is a home calf raise machine. This is just a prototype that Ben is working on, but uh, he's trying to make it available for like everybody to have in a home gym. And I really like it. It's a it's a good machine. Right that there. one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's a good machine. It's not the final prototype, but it'll show you kind of like what a good cap seated calf raise machine is supposed to be like. We'll do. Probably stack it up. Let me see, yeah, strong calves. So you yank that thing out and then you can pull it up. There we go. I put Bring them back. Similar to the slant, yeah, just okay. a little bit further back. Yep. Is that way good or you need more? Sweet. It's good? More or no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got big ass calves, man. Looks out of season. <laughs> Last one. Last one, yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So it really mainly is, I think, it's just a structural balance issue where your calves are so strong, but your tibs not quite as balanced. Definitely. I like this machine. Yeah. I like the stretch I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, knee, knee pain will come to that too. So you see how your knee is over your toe here? Mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest part of the design of this machine. Mm -hmm. And what a good calf raise machine will be is it allows you to do that so you can really target the soleus muscle. Um, like he said, like if you're really imbalanced in extension versus flexion, uh, especially if you have weak flexion, there's a good chance that you're going to not be able to handle the forces that you're putting on your body when you're jumping. Uh, so like for example, knee extension but no knee flexion, like when you're sprinting, if you have like really powerful push but like no heat, nothing here, yeah. then there's a very likely formula for you to get hurt, right? So like you'd want your squats to be just as good as your Nordics, or split squats to be as good as your Nordic strengthen in the front, quads yeah. as well as your back, your hamstrings. All right, how many is that? That's 25. Okay, bring it up. All right, sweet. That's it. Awesome. I like that. I like this. So that's the lower. I like this one. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. It's different from typical yeah. stand calf machines too because that one has a slight slant. So it does have more of a stretch in your Achilles and yeah. make it more knee over toe. Yeah. So that's basically the lower leg trio, which is essential for developing athleticism. You want to measure a little bit to get stronger in your lower leg, uh -huh. as well as you measure a little bit to get stronger in your squats and all the bigger lifts. But you don't want to ignore the lower leg because, again, that's like the first line of defense against knee pain. Because the more the stronger your lower leg is, the more you can absorb, the more you can depend on you for, for you to jump. It's only going to make you stronger if you have this as a strength. Whereas if you if your knee if your quads are too strong for your lower leg, uh, then your lower leg's gonna get hurt. But if your lower leg is too strong for is stronger than your quads, your quads aren't gonna get hurt because of it, right? You're only gonna be better off. Uh, and same thing applies in order of the upper body. Like if your lower back's too strong for your legs, it's very likely you mess up your knees, right? If you're like jumping super high because of it, hey, how's it going? Somebody's checking out the job. <laughs> it's awkward. Yeah. All right. So where are we going? Oh yeah, polyquin step ups. So we're gonna hit. Yes. Okay. So this is, uh, we're very lucky to have this. What the heck? Do you wanna go say hey? Yeah. Sorry, we got a random person trying to come in. All right, so we're very lucky to have this. This is called a mobility box. Uh, this is actually not even on the market yet, but they made it so that you can scale like the height of everything, right? Oh, okay, so uh, we're coming over here. Not yet, we're gonna come over here, but I was just gonna show you, this is how you can set it up at your gym if you don't have one of these, or like a step-up box. Uh, Most students will have a step-up box, but you can also do like, it's a little ratchet, but it works. Right. Uh, so for the polyquin step-ups, you want the foot slightly turned out about 15 degrees to the whatever side uh, you're working. So we're gonna start on the right side. Okay. And so about 15 degrees out, you'll put your foot here on the heel. You're gonna keep your, I don't wanna, oh. I don't wanna be rude. So. so you, okay. Yeah, so you keep your foot here. You're gonna control the descent on the way down, bring your toes up, and then only bend the knee. The hip stays completely straight. Only bend the knee, touch at the bottom for a second, and then come back up like that. So you're, if you look at this motion from the side, it's basically the same motion that you use when you're jumping. Connor's got one of the best polyquin step ups ever. He can do, like, show him real quick. Yeah. So I'm like, pretty good at strength. So I have a lot of strength in short range, but also like the outer knee range as well. So like at higher heights. Mm -hmm. It's e for me. It's easier to do something like this at like higher heights because I practice it all the time. Okay. And I have good short range knee extension. And you see he's keeping his back completely straight here, which is like super, it looks easy. He's making it look easy, but it's super hard to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, like this is something you build up to through building it like short range knee, like six inches, or like even, like a lot of people start below six inches as well. They'll start at either flat ground with just the heel elevation or a three inch elevation, mm -hmm. and then like work on load as well. But through jumping for years, this is like a skill I've been able to develop right. because of like consistently working on it, not just from jumping alone, but working on my polyquin step ups. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're facing okay, facing this way? Yeah. Or turn it this way? You turn it that way. I want to see what you can do on okay. 
Six inches before we elevate more. Now you now don't put it other like way. that. The other foot. Oh yeah, we're starting on the right. So slightly out of this way. Yeah. We'll be right there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and just. Yeah, that's perfect. There you go. Yeah, and your form looks great, man. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah, so you so you can scale this by adding weight or by uh, increasing the height, mm -hmm. right? The So, so one of the factors that ATG is based on is tension training over strength training, right? The only thing that, a lot of people think that the only thing that matters is how much weight is on the bar, but the reality is t tension as opposed to just weight is a lot more uh, in the equation than just the amount of load that you're, you're pu pushing through, right? So tension or the amount of tension equals, uh, I think it's tempo, right? Like how fast you're going up and down, the amount of weight on the bar, which is an, imp is an important factor, and then the amount of time that you're spending under tension. So, or the amount of time that you're training, right? So like how long have you been put, compounding? Yeah, how frequent are you training? How, how much tension is gonna go into this? So if you're doing like 500 reps or something, it's a lot more tension overall than uh, and then also, the, oh yeah, I messed up. Yeah, let me explain that equation again. I always try to picture it in my head, and it's very difficult. Other side? Huh? Yeah, other side. Yeah, so here we're manipulating. Um, how do I explain this? Okay. We can cut this out too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you trying to um, explain? So, I'm trying to explain why you can. So, a lot. One of the factors of ATG is like tension, strain, tension training over strength training because it's not necessarily just the amount of load that you're using. It's also many other factors such as time, the position, exactly. The position, uh, so there you're changing the position to go a little bit deeper, like so more range squat. of motion, like a pistol squat. So what this is doing is you're adding a lot more tension to the tendon because you're, you're putting the muscle under stretch, right? So position is a factor. Time, like frequency, right? How, how often you do it? Tempo, and then weight. Uh, so quality of tension is actually time, uh, times parentheses, amount of load, um, position, and then tempo. So those three factors times time, or how long, how how often you do something, or how long you've been doing it for, is what equals the uh, the effect on the muscle. Does that make sense? Because these are all. T um, Tempo, the amount of load, and position are what equals tension. So tension times time equals the effect on the muscle. Makes so sense. right, so you can create uh, a big effect on the muscle without even using any weight by scaling this with just up in the height. Does that make sense? As opposed to just adding more weight. So here we could technically add like, uh, what's something good? You could technically add a good bit of weight here just to make this more pressure on the, more effect on the muscle, right? It makes you stronger. Or you, what you can do is you can raise the amount of elevation because then you're changing the position to add more strain. And like you said, you could change the tempo, like how slow the eccentric is on the way down. Right, that's gonna give you a lot, a lot more, uh, more strain. So like for example, I can do that with like 135 on my back, but I don't think I can do this for 12 inches because it's so much harder you're putting a lot more tension on the muscle there than it would be with just 135 pounds. You see, I can't even get up out of that. But Connor can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you want to test that theory, Connor can do that with like 100 and... Like 300 pounds almost. Yeah. Like that, oh shit, that's insane. Close. Yeah. Yeah, bro, be careful. Yeah, you oh, see, I see it. Yeah, you see what I mean? There's a lot more tension there. Yeah, so it's like taking the principles from calisthenics and merging them with also like strength training. That's pretty good. That is impressive. So yeah. you can do about eight, eight inches, it looks like. There you go. But see how you have to bring your hip down? Okay, you don't want so, to. Okay. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a different exercise, yeah. The difference yeah. between a pistol squat and like oh. the step up is the step up is more knee dominant. The pistol squat, you're going to engage a lot more of the glutes. Yeah. And like posterior. So you've done 25 there each. Now we're going to go into split squats. So we're going 
sled, lower leg, step up, split squat, right? These are like the different levels of knee ability. It's actually sled, step up, split squat, squat, stretch, reverse Nordic. But we, we took you through lower leg as well because it's very important for uh, your, the sport that you want to do. So elevating, you probably, just looking at you, you're probably going to do six inches to That's hit. generally where we have people start at as well, like six inch elevation. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start on the right leg. Uh, and we'll start with assistance first, just okay. to see where it's at. That's what I really like about the mobility box. Yeah. Is it makes it a lot more accessible to have assistance as well. It's very easy to scale too. You get oh yeah, you got it. On the way down. Yeah, bro. That's great Easy. Coverage. So we'll do five each side. For um, can you do it on the way up without it? <laughs> no. Without it is like. Yeah, that's fine. As long as there's no pain, all the way down, up. You okay? Yeah. Was there any weirdness there? Uh, a safe way to scale it too is even if I know you, I can get into it. If you want to assist it on the way up, you just do a little push. You don't have to 100% rely on it on the way up. Yeah. That's another way to progress this. I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm going to show you all the different ways of using the split squat. So this first one, we're just getting normal reps, and then we'll go into poultice, five second hold at the bottom, and then uh, five seconds up, hold, up. Five seconds down? Yeah. That one's hard. Yeah. All right, and we'll swap sides. Yeah, I can hear your knee cracking. Yeah, you can hear mm -hmm. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I would recommend elevating it from now on at least six inches. Uh -huh. Especially since most gyms and areas, you won't have access to something like this to where you can use assistance so easily. Mobility looks great, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to stretch. It's just building the strength now, which is where those step-ups are going to come in handy when you start being able to add load or strength in with a sled or a squat. Yeah, mobility is great. So he has the hip flexor length and strength, mm -hmm. like reverse squats. Well, as well as the squats. <clears throat> you want to strengthen the knees and the quads? Yeah. One more, and then I'll show you the pulses. Oh, yeah, bro. You got it. We just got to get you strong there. Yeah, I'm telling you, once you get flat ground, Watch strong out. there. Strong where? Strong in this exercise. Okay. You'll be a freak on the basketball court. You okay? Yeah. A little weirdness? All right, so this time I want you to hold on to the sticks the whole time because we're just doing bottom quarter pulses. So we're going up slightly and then back down. So not bouncing because we're not ready for that yet, but like up, controlled, on the way down, and then back up, okay? So these pulses are more for remodeling the knee but also getting lots of blood flow to the patellar tendon. So it helps you heal a lot. And then you're also getting quite a quad pump because you're working the quad from a stretch position over and over again. You're going to do 20 reps each side. Okay. All right. Right leg. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, hold on to this the whole time. Use assistance to kind of help you push in and out of it. All the way down. Yep. And then up just a little bit and then slow on the way down too. Excellent. There we go. How long is just a second. Literally just pulsing. We'll do. Yeah, yeah. Up and down. Yeah, just enough to like make a pause there before going back up. No, no, no. Twenty. Twenty reps. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, five what? We're gonna do five sets, just different variations of it. So this one's more for like people that need to get stronger quads so in general. Like tendon bathing too. Tendon bathing, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned like you're bringing synovial fluid to the patellar tendon. It's called tendon bathing. Um, it's really beneficial for like, if you need to get stronger in the end range position, because you're spending a lot of time there. Uh, and it, like you're already strong in the half squat because I see you doing these half squats on your profile all the time. Yeah. But so that, that's 
No, no, no. You're, you're going to about here. So that's like really strong there. But now we got to get strong here, right? In the tendon dominant position. Yeah. Yeah. So like. That can't go all the way there. <laughs> yeah, it will. You'll see. I'm going to show you how to do it. Because like you're doing them, but you're kind of pushing through a little bit of pain yeah. when you're doing them. So I'm going to show you how to do it without that. Like we're going to be able to regress them just using a squat rack or two chairs okay. while you're doing it at home. So another 20 here. Yeah, because like most people like, I don't know if it's an ego thing or like we just like don't think about it, but most people will not regress a squat. You know, like they'll just push through the pain instead. But the best thing you can do is regress it and then work through the full range of motion. You can't really cheat the progress. You yeah. got to find the pain-free ability yeah. to make progress. Yeah, I mean that's what's called athletic truth group. Because mm -hmm. you really got to, <laughs> you really got to like listen to your body yeah. and like not lie to yourself like what am I actually able to do without any pain you know because you can lie to your body but your form will tell if you're in pain while you're doing something or not right so like for example in the split squat if you are having to inch forward to come up out of the split squat that's letting us know that your knee is either going through pain or your quads are simply not strong enough yet to allow you to come up with a straight back so like you're doing here, try to come up with a straight back on your way up and really push into that quad. You can use assist up upper body assist as much as you need to. Like that? I just want you to keep your back straight, yeah. You know, see, see how you went that like that? Just keep it straight. Don't oh. end up pulling my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, is that what's going on? Yeah, okay. that makes just sense. stretch it, because it's, I think it's like stretching it. Down there? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, like if you come up from a squat like this is letting us know that your knees aren't strong enough yet to like really drive. So you want to be able to, or quads aren't strong enough yet. So you want to be able to drive them out so that you can keep your back straight up. Okay. Right? So you can't lie to your, you can lie to yourself, but you can lie to your form. Okay. It kind of tells, your body tells all. Uh, now the next one is just going to be five second holds. So like the first one you were doing, five by five, you're going all the way down. Okay. Holding for five seconds at the bottom and really focusing on that back leg stretch. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, up. You good? I'd even say maybe elevate it a little more to yeah. focus on keeping the back more vertical. Yeah. What, what's, uh, what's causing you to? Shin in the knee, a little bit of pain. Yeah, definitely try regressing it a little bit more. Yeah, let, let us know like if you have going through any pain on these. Yeah. Still a little bit of weirdness there? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Knee as well? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Might benefit from knee flossing too. Mm -hmm. Knee flossing. Yeah. I, I think step ups too, like really getting strong there. Yeah. As well as like elevating. But elevate the split squat as much as needed to maintain perfect form, really. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're still... although some people say, like you'll see in medical books, like a little bit of pain is fine, but really we want 100% pain-free ability because if you're getting a little bit of pain, you're kind of disrupting, like tearing off yeah. your knee a little bit. Yeah. Remodeling a little too much. Okay. Let's go even a little bit higher. Let's go. Sixteen is probably about as high as I want to go for now. And then we can check out some step ups. Yeah, like doing step ups with floss fans, or that might be helpful. Good idea. We might just need to focus on that the rest of the time. Yep. Alright, so this is just like a way of doing it for lengthening out the hip flexor. Focus on that. Yep, keep it straight as you can. <clears throat> and then five seconds on the way up. One, chest up. So yeah, so on your way up, instead of kind of like hinging back, keep your chest up the entire time. Okay. So slow on the way down. Five seconds on the way down. Good. Up. Much better. Okay. Like that? Mm -hmm. Again. Get a little slower on the way down. 
This is the patient way of like rebuilding. Yep. Yeah, man, so you didn't tell me your knee was bad, bad. You didn't know. The whole leg. <laughs> The whole leg, the yeah. whole right leg is bad. Up slow. One, two, I thought it was just your shin. Yeah. Situation. Last one on this side. Three, four, five, up. All right. Huh? Oh, I said good work. Oh, yeah, we'll try the other leg. Um, so, flossing with, for knees is a little bit different. So, okay. come over here real quick. Sweet. So you go underneath the leg, like right underneath the patella. Oh yeah, you can see your surgery scar. Ben likes these thick ass floss bands. Which oh, these are actually better, I would say. Hold that for me real quick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. You said what's better? Be good. Uh, the thicker ones. Okay. It's better. Just like right underneath the tendon, okay. and then one right above. It's like good for you? Yeah. You're too tight. It's good? That's good. Okay. Yeah, so I would, dude, if I were you, I would start every workout. I mean, you're already doing it with sled. I would say start every workout with sled and step ups. Okay. And then as regressive as split squats you need. How many am I doing for you, sled? For what? Step ups? Step ups, 25. Okay. Um, Is that just like you might need... for everything? No. Okay. No, no, no. We're just really high reps for like, because we're trying to regress it as much as possible. Yeah, Did you have any pain on the step ups? Um, only in, in the shin. I, I feel everything in the shin. Yeah, everything, everything right now. Yeah. yeah. But that's more because you're injured than like a long-term thing, right? Uh, yeah. That's wild. Okay. All right. So right there should be so good. Close. So one there and then one there. Yeah. Then you can bring that down. Yeah, you can bring it down. Bring what like down? this. Oh, that yeah, yeah. So we are gonna do. Got it. Yeah, I was just saying that way. And then we're going here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably feel a good bit more stable. Back to the split squat to see if it still hurts doing this. Do you feel it in your shin when you do split squats too? Uh -huh. Like at the bottom? Wow. Man, what do they have you doing in this class? They have kettlebell sets. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Up slow, five seconds on the way up, chest up. Okay, back down on the way slow. One, chest up. Three, four, five, all the way down, four. Okay. Nope, stay. <laughs> up. Yeah, it's just really slow, I'm trying to rebuild there. Chest up again. I don't think you're ready for pull to this down. Again, two, three, four, five. Still any pain there? The pain it is underneath there. Oh, okay, so not in the knee though. Not really. That's good. Yeah. A little bit less. What would you say there? Up. 
Hmm. Slow. Try to completely cover hamstring over calf here. A little bit more. Crush it, crush it, crush it, crush it. Good. Stay there for a second. All right, we're coming up slow. Good. Okay. Two more. Drive, drive the shin forward like you're trying to, there we go. And then up slow again. We got one more after that. What are you thinking, Connor? I think he's getting good form. I think the scaling and the flossing definitely will help a lot. For It doesn't like limit range of motion, but it's going to help make sure that you're breaking up the scar tissue when you're wearing the floss bands and still working through a range of motion that is comfortable. Elevating the front foot, I think, will be the most important than using assistance as needed, which we're doing here. I think the most important thing, like what you mentioned, uh, Ruben, is just being honest with yourself. There's no rush, there's no ego that has to be involved with improving pain free ability. Everyone's different in going through different things. You, if you, so you say you're doing VMO squats, slam board squats. Can I see you, kind of what you're doing, and then maybe we can adjust from there? Yeah. With this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll help. It'll help in the lowering phase for sure. What I would say is you don't want the floss bands on for too long, too, though. Yeah. This is the last set we'll do with them. So that's what you're doing? Okay. So these are these are good, but you're not going all the way down? And I think it's just because, it's because this the pain. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show you okay. how you can regress them. So you can Well, I was thinking you can actually use a, the benches is a little yeah. bit more stable. So and it might be a little bit harder to replicate this at home, but thank you. I need like two surfaces that will allow you to help yourself like into the squat because you want full range of motion. This will be a lot better and you'll progress a lot quicker for, from this because then you're not just limiting your range of motion here. You're going all the way down and then you can build strength very slowly at that. So whatever range of motion, because it was almost like, let me see. It's like you stop going down right about here, right? So then now you can help yourself into this position. Just take as much pressure off as you can using your upper body. Sit here for a second and then come up solo like that. Does that make sense? So like assisting yourself into the position. Let's give those a try. And if you feel any pain, then it's best to just avoid these at all. Like if, even if we're like assisting yourself, Best to just avoid them until you can um, recover using the split squats. Okay, how was that? Good. Now, do me a favor, bring your feet forward. Yeah. And now, try to sit on your heels to drive the knees forward on the way down. It's a little bit of a different squat. Yeah. Yeah. Try to sit on your heels. Came with this one. This, okay. this is the reason why this, this one would do it, but. Yeah. yeah. So it's the mobility on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so try it now. Put your hands on the actual bench. Yeah. On the way down. Still. Are you able to help yourself a little bit more there? Drive the knees forward. On your way up. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, man. So I wouldn't even do squats right now. Yeah, I think the best best case for you is going to be, like I said, lower leg. You got to get those tips stronger. Mm -hmm. You got to keep doing lower leg step ups. You can't ignore those. They're going to help you jump higher. They're okay. also going to help your knee a lot. Okay. And then split squats really elevated, like no more fly ground. Okay. So I was watching you do fly ground. I was like, oh, he's got the fly ground one.
can't do those right now until okay. we get stronger without pain. Okay. okay. These I wouldn't even do right now because, like, you're – honestly, like, there's been studies that, that show, like, if you only go in about here, you're actually doing more damage to your knees than if you go all the way down assisted. Okay. So, like, for now, until you can do all the way down assisted without pain, I wouldn't do any more of those fights. Okay. Okay. But – and now you have something you can work on. Mm -hmm. Like, that's going to help you stay in shape. You're, dude, okay, so here's the thing. Like, most people think that doing this stuff is going to make you lose muscle. Like, my legs got way more shredded after I started doing this stuff. So, um, last thing I'm going to have you do is one more set on these uh, polyquin step-ups, and then we okay. can get into some mobility work. Okay. So, let's start on that, on the leg that squats right now, and then we'll swap. Right here? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll take that off so you can get some blood flow in there. Adding to that, if you have floss bands, I think flossing beforehand will help a lot too. Step up one spot flossing. Yeah. And sled, of course. Step up, split spot flossing, and flossing with sled. Yeah. Oh, where did the. Oh, I'll put it on. LOL. Well. Wow. Wow. How do the step ups feel? Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. There is hope. So, what do you do for mobility? Because you're very flexible. I stretch a lot. You stretch a lot. Yeah, I mean, I've been stretching my whole life. For yeah. The track, for like, that makes sense. I stretch. I'm just laying in bed and I'm stretching. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get those tendons stronger, bro. Oh yeah, but there's there's definitely like hope because like you have Step -ups are good. you have the will and desire to to uh, to improve. I know these ex dude. I know these exercises seem so simple, but they are so incredibly helpful. Like even though and effective, even though they're so simple, like you just that's the thing is like you'll only get better if you actually do them. <laughs> Consistency. Yeah. It won't happen overnight, but like even like the course of a week or a month, people see significant results. That's yeah. true. That's how it was when I started doing the uh, split squat. Exactly. Like, I got better, like, within a month. I was like, oh, shit, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, but the split squat's sexy. Like, I, everybody wants to do split squat. Or, like, a Nordic or a the, KOT squat. Nordic KOT squats. The, the most effective stuff is the simplest, like, yeah, the polyps like and step ups. Sled. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's doing sled, but I bet you the majority of people that see ATG on, like content online, they're not doing uh, tip raises. They're not doing calf, calf raises. Calf raises yeah. They're not doing step ups. But that's the stuff that I mean, like that's the accessory stuff. It's not the meat, but it's yeah. what makes it. Yeah, what makes all the accessories possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what makes all the easier. the main entrees possible. Like easier too. Yeah. So like for example, like astrograph squats without a strong lower leg is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And astrograph squats without step ups, w without at least working up to a certain amount on step ups is probably a bad yeah, idea like too. Yeah, Nordics without elephant walks or like hamstring curls. Yeah. Yeah. Nord yeah, exactly. Nordics without hamstring curls is also a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So. We're working all these knee extension. Now we're going to go into some knee flexion uh, with the hamstring curl machine over there. I'll show you some protocols you can do over there from uh, Charles Poliquin. And we can go into Nordics if you're down for that. Yeah, I'll show you how to regress in Nordics. So 25 well, side. Yeah, we'll do that as soon as he's done here. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> All right, that's it. So let's take that floss band off. Sweet. Sorry. I don't even take my shoes off. I usually do. Sorry. Did you ever train your uh, lower back? Never. Never? Or Val, you're going to learn a lot tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, because then, I mean, you're missing on a lot of explosiveness. Think about it, like, when you jump. 
That's half the equation, right? Like the answer chain. Like the answer chain is what we're working on today. And a little bit of posterior with the Nordics and the hamstring pulls, but this back extension, like that's what you're doing when you're jumping up. That's your energy moment. That's what that's your rocket power. Like your so, you'll put on you'll put on a few inches on vertical just from training the lower back. Mm -hmm. So, right, so hamstring curl machine, and a lot of gyms aren't going to have a line one like that, so that's not perfect. But even having something like this, where it's like a rack attachment, super useful. Uh, knee flexion is probably one of the most neglected things in the world of sports. Like, there's a lot of NFL teams that don't even have hamstring curl machines, and that's why you see so many ACL tears, so many ACL injuries, because they're going the opposite side behind the knee. Um, and you're running, like especially running backs, wide receivers. Uh, you're running all the time, so like you're using that muscle all the time. So if you don't strengthen it, then there's a chance of overuse injuries, chance of instability in the knee. Because you want you want to have a good balance between, right? And then for jumping, yeah, for jumping, the last part of the jump, you're under triple flexion as well. Your ankles are ex like flexing. You're flexing your knee behind there. Mm -hmm. And like you bring up your legs right before a jump. So that's where it becomes important for jumping, as well as not only being, it's similar to like the tib raise, it kind of is a decelerator as well. It's helping you like one, come to a stop, but also like explode out of the jump as well. And like in the high jump verbs or a longer high jump, you're like pushing your leg like that right before a jump. Right. So that's where it becomes really prominent. Yeah. So for hamstring curls, um, from hamstring curls, you want to build from higher reps to lower reps, mm -hmm. but ultimately lower reps is where the money's at because hamstring curls are high. Uh, hamstring curls are very like fast twitch muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you want to get them really strong. I can but strength. yeah, mm -hmm. but doing like three by twenty is also useful for building up a good foundation in the same way that it is for most exercises, right? That's why we do high reps over there. Eventually, you can do lower reps, less volume, and more intensity, um, but. For hamstring curls, the recipe is getting low reps with high weight. But we're going to start you out, just because we're warming up for Nordics, we'll start lower, lower weight, right? Um, so the, best, the biggest thing on hamstring curls is like getting as much knee flexion as possible. That meaning like getting your butt to, like it to cover as much of your butt as you can. And then back down. So the biggest thing is controlling the eccentric. Fighting, 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 fighting on the way down. There's a few variations you can do. Your hamstring have three strings, so uh, you can target each one of them by how you place your feet. So if you go out, you're targeting the inside. If you go pointed out towards the middle, targeting the middle hamstring, and then toes pointed in targets the other head of the or the other string. All right. So there's three ways to train those. You want to get equally strong at all three of them. And then uh, the other way that you can correct imbalances between legs, which is what I would suggest for, for you, is to do two up, one down. So you go really light, you bring it up with both legs, and then you control down as much as you can with one leg. So up, eccentric all the way down. Right, slow, 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 slow. Up. You can take turns or just work on one at a time. And then you do like four sets of eight. All the way down. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So let's just do high reps. Uh, let's go to 20. 21 kg is good. And that'll warm us up for Nordic curls. And right before that, we'll also do some elephant walks. So I can show you how to train. So, do I want it? How yeah. Far do I want it? Yeah, I might want it. Uh, so you want the Achilles like right there? Uh, it depends on your preference, but typically. I like further up on the calf, so yeah. it allows you to get full range of motion. You want yeah. this mat. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. All the way, yep. You good. Oh, you you gonna you wanna go ahead and try that? Okay, cool. That's good. That's really good. So I was thinking higher reps as in like bring him bring it up with both legs. Oh. Now. Yeah, yeah. I was just showing you two up, one down, because it's a different variation. A good uh, uh, improvement balances. Yeah. If you have a weaker leg, it's yeah, amazing. <laughs> you can do that one at home. I mean, not at home, but like at the gym. 
There you go. Six. Good. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. You got ten more? Yeah, Grant Hill was a great dunker, wasn't he? He was an amazing basketball player, yeah. Oh, bro. Very athletic. Yeah. Is he Hall of Fame? If he's not, he, I think he is. He didn't win no ring. Yeah. Uh, he's like, as good as Scotty Pippen, as good as anybody in his position. Yeah. He's yeah. a Hall of Fame caliber player for sure. Yeah, yeah he, he, really, he is like Scotty Pippen level. Yeah. He just was on the Pistons right after they were like really good, like the 90s. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, that's it on those. Yeah. So now uh, elephant walks, and then we'll get into some Nordics. I think elephant walks. Like the mobility box. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. He might already have the mobility for it, but if not, this is a great way to progress it. Yeah. I think I've got the mobility to do it. Yeah. I think you do too. I was just like, like for more people I watching mean, Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> like a great way to progress this. Orval Orval is probably ready. He has very good flexibility in his hips and hamstrings. But what you can do is elevate your hands higher if you need to and slowly progress this by lowering the of the of the box until oh, you so get we doing this? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I figured he had the mobility yeah. already. And then bend okay. Yeah, bend uh, one knee. Oh. Yeah, bend, so bend like, straight one knee up. Like this. Yeah. The single ladies dance. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That's just another way to warm up for Nordics mm -hmm. and then also to prepare your hamstrings to handle the tension of Nordics. But if you've been, you've been doing eccentrics before, you can probably do these. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to elevate the box so that you're able to do them easier. Like elevate the bench itself? Yeah. Okay. So elevating it like this is going to help you reduce the amount of tension that's going in the hamstrings. It just makes it easier overall. Um, so again, like I said, that equation, right, it doesn't matter how much necessarily how much load, but it's also the position and the angle that causes tension in the muscle. So with this, we reduce it as opposed to like doing a flat bench. Uh, it's just a lot more accessible for people to get into. You'll see like the Nordic Hyper has that adjustability. Same thing for the one that Tip Bar got made. Super, I mean, that's amazing. That's, I would say that's a better bench than the current Rogue one. Even the rogue is supposed to be the best you can get because you don't have to do all that stacking, right? Pretty sure ATG is coming out with a new one too, so like people are starting to catch on that this is the way to progress more it's the best. Because the way you do it here is you, once you can master this elevation, you can start lowering and lowering the elevation, okay. right? So fight on the way down as much as you can, control it, and then on the way up, think about uh, getting your head out of water. We're almost like rising up like a dolphin, right? So I'm going to show you how to do it before uh, engaging the hamstrings. So you want to get your back up as high as possible, right? Without engaging the hamstrings. So you're, it's almost like you're cheating, right? But that's okay because it's just a regression for the actual full exercise. So up. You can see how high I got it before I use my hamstrings, and then eventually you go, right? Because then I engage them. So in my opinion too, I wouldn't say it's even cheating. I would just say it's engaging more upward over the posterior chain. Like, some of the really good, people who are really good at Nordics, they engage their hip extension first before they start flexing in the knees. There you go. Yeah. Because you need both hip extension and knee extension. Yeah, 100%. You want to give it a try? Let's do it. Let's do it. Connor can show off his Nordics if, if you want to. Sure. In a little bit. I was over here watching. Exactly. That's why this, I, in my opinion, is better than a smaller Nordic bench yeah. because it is sturdier and it allows you to get all the way down. So I can go. Also, yeah. You prefer like this or like this? Or no, like whatever this? works for you, man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can even swing your arms at the bottom to get out of it. Okay. Yeah. Chest up, straight, 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 straight. Excellent. Yep. Really good. Great eccentric, man. Yeah. So you like swing up with your head. And you don't have to keep your hands behind your back. You can use your arms to swing back too. There you go. Boom. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. That was easy, too. That was so, easy. We're going to do three sets of five, and if you want, we can lower the difficulty each time. Yep. Nice. Those look great. So, take your hands out here. Yeah, you can go ahead and practice for the harder difficulties. Get your head down. And then, as you come up, swing your arms back. Like, getting... Yep, yep. You can practice that a few times. Yeah. Nice. There we go. You can really you do it. It was a funny share. <laughs> you good? Yeah. And like the way Connor does it, he just does like the Superman on the side. Yeah. I, I can show oh. how I do it. Like, yeah. Because I really like to whip my this is three. extension. I can feel yeah. my left hamstring is stronger than my right. Yeah. Yeah. So those two up, one down hamstring curls are going to be so important. And at your gym where it's seated, you could do that as well. Like, bring them both down and like just have the other one rest at the top. Just don't do that with too much weight because it will fuck up your legs. So. Yeah. <laughs> Start really light and then once you get confident, maybe up it by like 2.5 or something. They're really good. That's a great eccentric. Whip. Whip it. That's four. Yeah, we'll probably stay at this elevation. Last one. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Good. Yep. So eventually the goal is for, you got it. Yeah, so swing your arms back. So bring them forward and then swing them back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Easier, right? All right, we'll let Connor show off and then we'll. I just want to show like how I like to do it. If it wasn't for this, I, I feel like I could go further down, honestly. Nice. I'm just gonna, uh, yeah. So something that I like to utilize a lot. Oh, you want to do it on here? Oh, I was gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna like just do like that. What I like to utilize a lot is that hip extension, like what Ruben was talking about. And swinging through the top. Your eccentric's really good. That person is what I focus on the most. That's how I was able to get to a flat ground Nordic. I first started with the elevation as well, literally just going as slowly as I could, uh -huh. and then. Within like a year, after a year or two, then I started introducing the concentric because I didn't have a Nordic bench before, so I wasn't, I didn't even have the choice to do a concentric Nordic. Okay. But like slowly controlling the way down. Nice. And then this is the part. This is the part where I really like, like getting as much back extension, as yeah, extension as I can, and then catching myself with my hamstrings. I like to think of it as like catching myself with my hamstrings. I'm going up as much as I can, and then catching myself with my hamstrings. Okay. No warm up, no nothing. Just <laughs> <laughs> but the most important thing, really, you can become a freak athlete just doing the eccentrics. I know. Literally that alone. This is. Yeah. Once I get this. The like once you can get to a point where. I'm going to jump over your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once you can get to a point where. Yeah, flat you got it. Seriously. There we go. Flat ground eccentric is easy or like control really well, you're pretty close to it. And I think if you have the right setup, it's, it worked really well for you. Yeah. Like, and a way to keep yourself really honest with it too, is making sure your hip doesn't hinge back. I, I see people doing that's that. why, that's why personally I like what you did, where you keep your hands on the back like this. It kind of forces, like you, you know if you're starting to hinge at the hip or not. Control the way down here. And then extend up, like keeping the hands on the back. Yeah, and the goal, the goal which Ben can do this is getting your thighs to hit before your belly button does yeah, which is on like the way down. Which I don't want to attempt. <clears throat> yeah, no, you're good. All right, one more set up here. I reckon we can lower this one too. I think you can. You think it. so? Yeah. For five? Yeah. Okay. I think if you focus on that hip. Oh no, it's just the shin. Is Let's try this then. I think in the future, if you focus on that hip extension though, like really swinging up before engaging your knees. Or your knee flexors, it it feel a lot easier. All right, round two. Through them tomorrow, are you gonna do like back extension, seated good morning, RDL, stuff like that? No. Oh, for him, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I think like that's like the whole other half. Yeah. Training. Yeah, you have to. Which is gonna help bring up the nice. Yeah. 
Good. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Swing up. That's oh, the you gotta butter right there, that eccentric portion. Yeah. Kind of my try to try to lead with your head up, like whipping your head back, like a back extension. You talking about when I come back? Yeah. I, yeah, that's a good point. I like to think of it as a back extension. Mm -hmm. In that, you're not using the knees as knee flexors, but you're still using that hip extension, which mm -hmm. you can use here. Yeah. So like you're head butting someone behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that was almost purely knee flexion, still. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you gotta. That's impressive that you're able to do that. I might try this at this height, just over exaggerate what I mean. So. Yeah. Because I think go. it'd be easier because flat ground is like pretty challenging for me. But if I over exaggerate the amount of hip extension needed, yeah, it'll show how much it helps. Right. Getting in order. The reason I like that option as well, what you're saying, like the moving your head back, which I already kind of mentioned. Look down and then look up. I mean, look down. Yeah, look down and on your way up, look up. There you go, that's that better. better. Um, the hamstring curls, that's it. I think, that's it. that was five. Hamstring curls already are great for isolating the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, more uh, beneficial for full posterior chain yeah. ability. Yeah, 100%. And you can still make it hamstring dominant by how you position your uh, hips. Yeah. So. so I'll show you what I was talking about, which I think you probably would be naturally good at since you're actually like, you're good at the hip flexor raises, mm -hmm. you're good, like shooting like that. Is that's kind of how I like to think of it when I I'm gonna just start here. Like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna engage my knees after like mm -hmm. like I didn't even engage nice. my knees at all. I pretty much just extended my hips. I think that's something that if you focus on it, you might not feel it as much in your hamstrings, but it's gonna help you once you get lower down as well in the Nordic. I'm just kidding, no oh. <laughs> you can rest a little bit longer. And then we, we just got one more of these, and then I was going to show you our hammer. Okay. Uh, stretching wise, how's your pigeon? I don't think I ever did that. Stretching. You never done pigeon? Okay, you might you probably need it. <laughs> and then it's uh, a butterfly, it's for your groin and your um, okay. your performance outer glute, yeah. Pigeon, pigeon, couch. and. His couch is probably pretty good, but we can, we can test the couch. Slant half might be good. Yeah. It's also going to work the chin a little. Yeah. Good idea. Nice. Oh, yeah. Bro, you'd be doing it's Nordics cool. in no time. Especially because you, you used to be former track, so. I had to push a little bit on that one. It's okay. I'm trying. I think you can do a pistol squat for sure. I can't. I, I, I bet you could practice. Oh, yeah, I got to practice it. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is I think you have the strength for it. Not yet. Look. I can't. How are you? Because, I mean, I'm talking about an ass to grass one. I, w I wouldn't want to do just a half. Yeah. You could probably do a half one. Nice, there you go, last one. This and those split squats are gonna be game changing. He finna be sore tomorrow. Oh yeah. And after posterior chain, yeah, it's, it's happening when only training like three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> or three times. This week, yeah. Nice. Sweet, good job man. All right, that's it. I think it was, that was smart that you chose ATG Pro uh, Ruben because it covers yeah. like everything within yeah. the next three days. That's the goal. Um, so here, car hammer raises. Put your elbows through, all the way through. Grab this. You basically just bring. I just did these, so I'm super sore. <laughs> we go 90 degrees and then up like that. It turns to that top range. Yeah. I think, Mm -hmm. And you can progress it by going up and then down like that. And then even more by straight legs. Yeah. There's an infinite amount of progress you can make on this one. Pretty much. Yeah, you look like you got. Did somebody drop a kettlebell on your leg? No, that was rough. Little, little yeah.
Please? 20. If you can. We'll just do, let's just go to 10. Let's go to 10. No, so okay. a little bit further this way, right? And then grab the straps. There you go. Just a little bit further. Yeah, there you go. Uh-huh. There you go. Don't let it go below 90 degrees. Four, five, there you go. Six, if you're really good at reverse squats, you get really good at this one. Yeah, you're gonna do 20, let's go. There you go. There you go, he got it. There you go. Last one. Oh yeah, you got that easy. Oh, you, you gonna keep going? Let's see what he got. 24. Dang. <laughs> That's good. That's strong. Really good, yeah. Correlates directly to that one. Good stuff, brother. All right. Uh, then pigeon. So this is the pigeon stretch. I personally like this. Yeah, it's more. I would say it's more abs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you Your want to show him pigeon? Yeah, pigeon. You want me to show it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for the pigeon, I like having my knee like at the edge of the bench here. And then you focus on similar to a split squat. You want this back leg to be straight. And you kind of just want to drop into the stretch. You'll feel it in your outer glute as well as like under your thigh. And a good way to scale this is you can use this for assistance. Hold on to this. You can have this foot closer to you. The closer to you this foot is, the easier it's going to be. And you can also scale this by elevating the bench a bit more. So this is going to feel less of a stretch on your outer glute than if I were to lower it to a lower incline. I personally like doing like 30 seconds per side for two, two to three sets. And this is just a stretch. Correct, yeah. You can make it a strengthening exercise as well. You can eventually add load by, like you could take a weight like this. And you could strengthen it like this, like pulsing oh, up and down. I say that but really, I think the main benefits from the stretching work really well. So, personally, I like pigeon good mornings a little bit more. I'll show you what those are. So, pigeon good mornings are basically... Pigeon good mornings are basically the same movement, but you come down into the stretch. So, like, head to foot like that, and then back up. So, it's a little bit more stretch, and you can't get stronger in it. Like, Tiffany, for example, she can do that shit without using her hands at all. She's just like, no hands. And then added weight, too. It's crazy. Most women can. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. Because they don't have, they have, I feel like they have low mileage on their legs. Oh, yeah? It's like the wear and tear. Yeah. Of basketball and all the other sports. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Oh, yeah, you'll love this you one. Do you have your body weight? Can I? For 20 bucks? Mm -hmm. Evie, that's How much do you weigh? Like 170. It, it is a, for me, it's one of the tougher exercises, though. Can you move? Yeah. You can do 125? Yeah. Ooh. 50 kilos. You don't weigh 50. I weigh 220. Dang. stronger than me. No. <laughs> Just in that. I mean, I've gotten a lot faster, but. So with the other leg. From that one, other turn around the other side. Yeah, we gotta get this. We can just move the bench over that way. If you so want. This yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm just moving stuff around. Yeah. You got to bring your foot forward more a little bit. Like that? Mm-hmm. A lot more. Oh, like that? Yeah. And scoot back a little bit with your other foot. Scoot this leg back? Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's good. Oh, maybe this leg is just stronger. <laughs> or more flexible, yeah. yeah. For sure. It's your left leg, your right leg. Yeah. Tight. A little bit less strong. So you work on pigeon. This one, uh, do you ever have lower back pain? Not really. That's good. Yeah, this one, if you're like really tight in this position or this muscle is called the piriformis, uh, it can lead to sciatic nerve pain because it's right next to your sciatic nerve. See? Excuse me. So usually if a client has sciatic nerve pain or anything like that, I, I'll have them do this. And, Literally gone in like four weeks. I'm gonna be able to do a full Nordic by April. Mm-hmm. My birthday is April. So before I'm 36 years old, I'll be able to do a full Nordic. I mean, take your time though with those. It's gonna be like 20 months, man. I think if yeah. my shin wasn't feeling the way it is, mm -hmm. I could fight myself all the way down, at least. Maybe. Yeah. Try and do them like once a week. I wouldn't do them. Any, like I said, like what's gonna get you there is hamstring curls and RDLs and other. Way, there's other ways of training your hamstrings that you can improve on. I'll show you do a bit of those tomorrow, like your posterior chain strengthening. Let's go hit one more. Uh, Oh yeah, you said you wanted to do the yeah. reverse squat, yeah. Should I push for this one? All right, let's see what you got. 50% body weight. There we go. All right, bring it up 20 times. Oh yeah, you got it. That's light. You made that look easy, yeah. But I can do 20. That's let's go. Light. Two. It, I'm pretty sure it is lighter than what it says. Three, four, five. Six, good. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There you go. Fifteen. Oh yeah, got that easy. Let's go. Two more. Let's go up. Good. Oh yeah, you got it. That was twenty. That was 39 kilos. Which is? I don't know. It's, shit. I don't know. it's times 2.2. So I'm going to do, so it's about 80, about 90. That's 90 pounds? pounds. Mm -hmm. More or less. Really? Yeah. Damn. You want to okay. try a little bit heavier? 45 kg? Yeah, this one ain't got no resistance. Now, I mean, you, want, you might want to rest. Like, do you want to hit pigeon? Okay, let's go. See what you got of that. Damn, I got stronger than Because <laughs> I haven't worked out in like a week because of my shoulder. Oh, shit. 
Damn, it was bad then. I don't know, you've been consistent. Two. Oh, yeah. You got that, no problem. Yep. Nice. How many came off the bench? 45? Yeah. It's good. Sweet, man. Put 60 on there. Put 60. 61. See what you got. My abs are super sore from the guard hammers. You gotta get your legs higher. Yep, higher. Yeah, see now it's starting to hurt. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Too. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't do 60. I can do 55 or 57, I think. But I can't do 60. It's a lot more. You guys wanna get food? Woo, yeah, I'm hungry. Ice I'm running cream. on E now. Ice cream. You wanna do ice cream? Oh, we got some Ah, uh, okay. We can go somewhere else. No, we can get ice cream. It's up to do, do they sell anything else? Not just ice cream. That's all they sell? At Rizakwa? Yeah, bro, of course. Oh,